do you think people from refugee background can bring to startups? Not a combination you hear very often, but bear with me. I don't need to tell you that we're in the middle of the worst refugee crisis that the world has ever seen since the term refugee was coined in 1947. I also don't need to show you pictures of children running in camps they've lived in their whole lives or of people being dug out of collapsed buildings because you've seen those ones. I will just show you one picture. This is Hajar. Hajar had to come to New Zealand because her husband was fighting for their people's freedom in her country. She has four children, and the youngest was born here. Hajar has brought her whole family across the divide of seas and of culture. She's beautiful and clever, and also willful and determined. But when she first came here, it was difficult for her to find work. She had language barriers, no local experience, and small children. That's where we come in. Pomegranate Kitchen is a catering company with a difference. We provide group catering and individual lunch deliveries around Wellington, and upskill cooks from a refugee background to have work in a commercial kitchen. Our cooks come from Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Ethiopia, and Syria, and bring their food traditions to share with their new home country. Now, Hajar has a great head for bargains. She can tell me the price of all of the ingredients we use from anywhere around town. She's an entrepreneur herself. She started a pita bread business in a refugee camp before she came here. Because she's a businesswoman, she's always thinking about how to make our business more efficient. Efficiency is important in what we do. When we first started Pomegranate Kitchen, we wanted to build financial sustainability into it right from the beginning. That's why we made it a social enterprise. This can mean a number of different things, but for us it means that we're a charitable trust and all of the profits that we make go back into the business. On one hand, we knew that we had a good business idea, that people would appreciate fresh and authentic food cooked from scratch, and might even pay a little bit more for it, um, because it was, might be something that they believed in. But because we work with people who have sometimes never been in paid work before, what we do takes more time. So we receive some funding to help us start. The advantage of this is that we're accessing the generosity of New Zealanders and the business brains of our cooks. The social enterprise doesn't just benefit us. The experience for the customer is that they can eat good food and feel good about themselves. They can put their money where their mouth is. So when we first started Pomegranate Kitchen, we were so focused on giving the cooks a fair go, you know, clear responsibilities and set working hours. We were so focused on this that it took us by surprise when we saw how invested the cooks were, how much they wanted the business to succeed, and how much advice they had for me. Remember, I'm, I'm younger than most of them. But we shouldn't have been surprised, and here's why. People who have left everything they have behind and travelled long distances to get to New Zealand have often built up a level of perseverance, flexibility, and tenaciousness. Also, living in a dual cultural environment means that they're able to approach a problem in a number of different ways. These qualities will be essential as the workforce changes. Forbes' top 10 skills for the future show what we might come to expect in a globally interconnected and rapidly evolving workforce landscape. Three of these stand out for me. Social intelligence and cross-cultural competencies. That's about that dual cultural experience and not assuming that your drivers, goals and motivators are the same as anyone else's, whether it's your colleagues or your customers. Novel and adaptive thinking. This comes from being constantly pushed out of your comfort zone and having to quickly adapt to new realities, something we know people from refugee background have had to do a lot.
These same skills are also needed in startups like Pomegranate Kitchen. When you first start your own enterprise, you have to constantly be creative and flexible in your thinking. You have to keep going even when it seems overwhelming because no one you know, there's so much to do and no one you know has ever done it before. And you have to make it up as you go along. A recent study showed that because of the relative youth of refugees entering a country, for every euro that is invested in resettlement by a government, they can expect up to two euros in the next five years in return. The same study showed that a common misconception is that people have to be highly skilled to contribute to an economy, when in fact it's more important that the skills that these refugees have are divergent and complementary to the local workforce. There's some fantastic examples of people from refugee background being innovative and creating change. Madeleine Albright, Bob Marley, the Saatchi brothers, even the person who created Sriracha hot sauce. Who's to say what special and unusual qualities, shaped by their experience, help these people to see the world in a slightly different way? So back to our cooks. I told you at the beginning what I wasn't going to show you, and there's a reason for that. We don't believe that our cooks have to keep telling their story over and over again in order to be worthy of jobs. That's the same reason that we say refugee background rather than refugee. It's to show that being a refugee is an experience, not an identity. We also believe that society can rise above the old media adage, if it bleeds, it leads. There's been a lot of bleeding, but they're here now, and they're new Kiwis. Let's focus on what they can bring to our culture, rather than what they will cost us. Behind those numbers is a cook, an electrician, a musician, or a doctor. And that pita bread that Hajar made in the refugee camp, that's now wrapped around the bread, the pomegranate ki- wrapped around the food that Pomegranate Kitchen sends out to Wellingtonians every day. So when you go away today, I'd like you to do two things. First, think about every dollar you spend and whether it's going towards the kind of world that you want to live in. And secondly, think about what you do for a job. What are not just the skills, but the attributes needed? Is there a way that you can open your mind and help upskill someone from a refugee background? Thank you.